Alright, to go into like the third segment of this entire series um, tonight, um, still September 1st, quick dearly beloved shout out God bless to my dear friend, my real brother, Mr. Preston Jowers of Jowers Era Fitness on YouTube. So please go subscribe to him right now and check out his first video and give it a ton of likes, ton of good feedback. Pretty good editing, God, honestly. Pretty good editing. Gotta give him props on that. Me, I don't do editing on any, on any any of my stuff. I just don't. I just film it like this or film it like other ways you see me film and I just leave it like that, honestly. Again, another thing when it comes to cursing, just to let you know, I market myself heavily to the kids and I don't want the kids to learn cursing from me. I market myself as a role model and as a mentor and good role model mentorship is not cursing, okay? It is stuff like character counts. It is trustworthiness, responsibility, respect, integrity, and other stuff like that. If you're confused about what character counts is, at least St. John's County's initiative towards that, go look it up. It's phenomenal, and I have dedicated my life, definitely, you know, without even knowing it, to living up to that, and etc. But again, when you market yourself to the kids heavily like I do, again, make tribute albums for them, and tribute songs. You, again, role model mentor stuff comes with that, and that's what I am to the kids. I acknowledge it, it's my part of my everything, and that's why I do not curse as much as I, you know, definitely could in these videos, my music, and etc. Because I'm not saying I don't curse outside of this stuff, because I definitely have plenty of times. I've tried to catch myself as many times as I could, and or immediately apologize, because again, I market myself predominantly to the children. And I do not want them to learn bad habits like cursing from me. Really, anybody, but definitely me. And etc. I want to put I'm, again. I'm continuously working on myself, best version of myself out there for the kids to look up to. Because again, love the kids, and etc. You know it. Got to put the put the best content out there for them to learn, build, and grow with, and stuff like that. Again, said this in plenty of other videos, but you get the point. Um, so quick thing. <sighs> um, when it comes to being funny, I'm definitely have a great sense of humor. I'm not a comedian. I'm just a good actor. That's if you were to ask me. I'm not a comedian. I'm just a good actor because I have a great sense of humor if you were to ask me. And or if you've been around me long enough, you would see that and etc. Great motivational speaker too. One of the top things I'm known for in these is being a motivational speaker. God bless everybody. So as well, shout out God bless to one of my dearly beloved little sisters, Miss Radiant Rania, of which you have indeed, um, if you followed this channel for the last month or two, definitely in the month of June, I think, you will see that I released a song titled Ready and Rania for her with the cover of that song starring her and my dearly beloved other sister, Miss Mallory Pace. So once again, shout out bus to Ready and Rania. Her birthday, I believe, was yesterday. And it's, again, all glory be to God. She's phenomenal. She's beautiful. She's awesome. She's so radiant with her talent, her sense of humor, her positivity and everything. Again, love and admiration all day, every day. She's a gift from God, period. So um, to get back into more star point sports analysis, let's get back into it. So as I was saying before, um, there's a lot of quarterbacks, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of quarterbacks that absolutely are good, not elite. They're good. And if you were to have a dual threat quarterback in there, I'm telling you, it's the difference between a lot of these programs or a lot of these organizations, NFL-wise, being like literally conference championship contenders, if not every year out of five, a good three, you know, and then excelling to the Super Bowl at least one or two. And the reason why I say that, because like I say, I, again, as a football player, I don't like Stafford, I don't like Ryan, I don't like um, a few other guys. I just don't like them. They're just not elite quarterbacks to me. That's just it. The bad man Aaron Rodgers, nobody can deny him. Nobody, especially that big monster contract he got. Nobody can deny it. And he absolutely deserves it. And I absolutely wish him the best at hopefully winning another Super Bowl with that because he deserves it. He's Aaron Rodgers. He deserves it. Um, and etc. cetera. Um, shout out bust to Jalen Ramsey for better and for worse on all his comments on all the other, all the other quarterbacks. He's going to have his opportunity to prove himself right by picking them off five times, you know, like um, the Jaguars did to the Steelers in their first game this past season. So he's going to get his opportunities to, to show what he got with it, honestly. And, um, you know, one wants his unashamed. God for his God for everything, for better and for worse. 
But um, I can again assure you that um, when I again when I look around the league, it's amazing the quarterbacks that you shouldn't not be trying to sit and learn for a year. It's amazing the quarterbacks you should not be trying to do that. You try to do it too. Baker Mayfield is a quarterback that when you drafted him, you should not be trying to make him sit for a year. You should throw him straight into the fire. If you were to ask me, because again he, he again. I think was the most accurate pass, accurate college quarterback for the last year or two. No, two or three years for a reason. Come on, man. How are you going to make him sit? I mean, but at the same time, I guess it's just, again, just more drive to whenever he gets back in there again to own it and never let it go. But um, there's, again, there's quite a few quarterbacks. Like, for example, if you would ask me, um, Deshaun Kaiser, this past season in the NFL, he could have had a lit season if he had Tyrod Taylor there, you know, as a starter, so he would have sat back and learned for a season. Or if they had kept him and yet he was still competing for, for at least the backup job, if not a starting job. Because I totally back up them drafting Baker Mayfield, but at the same time, Deshaun Kaiser should have stayed at least as a backup, if you were to ask me. You know, Deshaun Kaiser could have definitely been great for the Browns if they had more patience with him. And I want to say better coaching, but I'm definitely going to say better patience. Again, growing pains. A lot of quarterbacks do this. You know, throw more touch, you know, throw more interceptions than they do touchdowns in their first year. We get it, you know, and et cetera. But obviously, you got to believe in a guy enough. And again, Sashi Brown was the one that drafted him, not uh, John Dorsey and et cetera. So you got to, again, think about that. Um, um, I don't. I forgot all the quarterbacks that was in last year's uh, NFL draft. But again, I can assure you there was enough. I know Cooper Rush was in that draft too. Yeah, Cooper, Cooper Rush was in that draft. There's, there's, there, I'm telling you, there's been enough quarterbacks, you know, f for years. You know, um, where I'm telling you, the Browns definitely they could have solved this issue years ago. You just have to be that much more smart, strategic with these guys, and they just had never have. If you were to ask me, I mean, God bless their pick on Johnny Manziel, but there's other things again you could have done while while he was there to where I definitely think would have made all the difference. To where he definitely could still be there, honestly. Again, is a lot of open-minded stuff that a lot of people just don't have. And if you don't have the open-minded stuff to take care of it, take care of it and own it, you're just never gonna, you know, reach your better tomorrow with it, honestly. Um, but other than that, you can definitely go towards like, um, like, cause I mean, if you would ask me, um, the quarterback, yeah, Deshaun Kaiser is one of those quarterbacks that definitely should have sat for his first year and learned. But if not that. He definitely should still be there in Cleveland, trying to, if not be the starter, be a backup. Honestly, again, I I defend I defend him drafting Baker Mayfield, but I definitely believe that Deshaun Kaiser should, should still be there. But that's just me. And the only reason why they drafted him was because I believe um his um yeah because he's he's from Toledo, Ohio. If I'm not mistaken, he's from Toledo, Ohio. So it's like you couldn't draft Mitchell Trubisky, the direct you know Cleveland native, or I guess the somewhat Cleveland native from Mentor, Ohio. Uh, that I guess Northeast, I guess you know part of Ohio, you know all Cleveland, you know, uh, you know Cleveland, you know Cleveland country and and etc. You know you couldn't get him, you know, and I I mean I understand drafting Miles Garrett, I totally understand that, but what would I guess a, the better a good question would be like, I mean, what would it have been like if they had Mitchell Trubisky, you know, if they they have traded if they have traded they have, they, they had traded enough picks, or they still could have got b b both of them, like what what would have happened? Because if you were to ask me, them playing like, oh, you know, we're not that, that desperate for a quarterback. Oh, trust me, you should have been. Because that's why you went 0-16, because you wasn't desperate enough for a quarterback. If you were to ask me, if you want to make a good joke out of it, honestly. But God bless the Cleveland Browns for better and for worse. But um, other than that, you got to put it into the layers of, you know, I mean, again, yeah, to, to, to lead a cool quarterback, that's the reason why they drafted him. You know, hey, we couldn't get the, the other guy. Let's get him. You know, the guy that nobody expected us to draft. Um, honestly, I don't think Deshaun Kaiser would have done a, a ton better if he had um, stayed in the college for another year and developed. I don't think he would have done, done it any any better. And what I mean about that is his draft stock, because there's too many quarterbacks breaking records all left and right, and they're still going undrafted left and right. J J T Bear did it. Um, J J T Bear did it. Todd Boyd did it. Todd Boyd drafted him in the sixth round. Um, Perry Hills did it with rushing. Didn't even get get, 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 get drafted. Brad. Kaya drafted in the seventh round, broke broke records in Miami. Um, again, and some other dude um, that that I was reading a report on the Saints should have drafted a few years back or a couple years back um, from Tiffin. Forgot his name, but again, 
he broke some records too. I, I really am sold on the idea that a lot of these GMs and uh, head coaches don't care what these um, sorry, they don't care what these college quarterbacks did in college. I am definitely now more sold on that than ever that these guys or these that these GMs and these um, head coaches they don't care what you did in college. I'm more sold on that than ever. And you probably be like, why Nate? Why are you more sold on that than ever? Look at it. How many of these quarterbacks, like I just said, and even vast majority of more, broke records while they were in college with either just that program or with the entire conference itself? They broke records, and they still didn't get drafted. Or if they did, they did get drafted. They got drafted in the low rounds. Think about it. If these guys really cared about, if these co coaches and GMs authentically cared about what these college quarterbacks do in the in, in college, they would be drafted somewhere within the first three rounds or first four rounds if they legitimately cared. I think the evidence, once again, is all around you. You just have to not turn a blind eye to it. You have to look at it from both, you know, from every angle you possibly can. But um, most definitely, you know, I got my analysis. I got more analysis on that, I'm pretty sure. You know, I'm literally telling you, if a lot more of these um, GMs and head coaches, if they were to go to the – to having more dual threat quarterbacks, I'm telling you, these guys, or just just that much more sharper, accurate quarterbacks, I'm telling you, they would be going deep into the playoffs each and every year. You know, I do believe so. They would definitely be going. To, you know, they would. They definitely would. That's just my opinion, honestly, because I mean, you gotta look at it. I mean, somewhat equivalent, somewhat equivalent to the um, NBA. Look who's going every year, or at least for the past few years. Think about it. You know, um, and et cetera. I mean. If you were to ask me, it's not that. If you were to ask me, this is just my personal opinion. And we made it to 2018 for, for a reason, especially with the NFL. We made it to 2018 for a reason. And if you were to ask me, it's not that hard. If you were to ask me to be just that much more extra selective with your process and just let it rip and see where it goes with certain positions, especially with the quarterback position. It's not that. It's really not that extraly hard of what these guys make it out to be. If you were to ask me, it's just not. But they make it out to be. I guess you could say because they never want to pull that trigger and they never want to give these guys who have been breaking these records their opportunities to shine in the pros. But thank God you got two other leagues that are coming up in the next two years. So, again, we'll see. Because I really, really want these guys to excel. I really, really want I, – I, I know, again, college – you got – not college. You got high school quarterbacks left and right. Look, high school quarterbacks left and right going to college. All these colleges. Again. They shine. They break records. Who, who are they going to play for in pros? You should not break records in college and not get drafted in pro. I'm like, I'm like going to say, really, you should not break all these records in college and not get drafted in pro at the quarterback position. You just shouldn't. You shouldn't. If you were to ask me, the league could be filled with a lot more younger quarterbacks if these guys, and I mean starting that is, because I'm pretty sure if you give some of these guys that opportunity, that real and authentic opportunity to shine in a regular season game or two, I'm telling you, I do believe the good majority of them will shine. But of course, this is just me giving my endless opinion because a lot of these coaches are never going to do it until the starter gets hurt. Knock on wood, that, that doesn't happen, but you get the point, you know. And God bless everybody. One was on shame. I wish everybody the best, but I'm definitely telling you, look at the evidence, ladies and gentlemen. I'm literally saying I definitely believe a lot more teams could do better pass first in the future if they just knew how to better run their draft boards and they knew who to take with the with these picks. Again, God bless Ryan Tannehill, but I'm not a Ryan Tannehill fan. I thought it would have been so amazing if they had if they had drafted a quarterback in the first round this past year or drafted a quarterback period, but they did not. Um, but again, God bless uh, David Fells and uh, Bryce Petty. They still got those two guys. So I mean, and Brock Osweiler was there. But for me, starting, he's not in the mix whatsoever. Um, uh, being long term future, that is definitely as, as well. And again, I'm just saying. I mean, I just don't buy into Brock Osweiler as a franchise quarterback. You know, I don't. I definitely buy into him being able to fill in for a few games, but not a franchise guy that's gonna, you know. Excel that's gonna lead you to a conference championship into a Super Bowl win. Just don't buy it, honestly. That's just my opinion, and God knows I own it. 
So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching, listening, viewing, subscribing. More takes coming soon. Forgive me if you don't agree with some of these takes and you think they're absolutely absurd. But again, I got my takes. You got your takes. Use your, use your discernment on them. And again, take care. God bless.